Hello guys and welcome to the channel TMZ the historian. My name is Zamir Khari and in this video I'll be talking about the history and evolution of the Sri Lankan style of wearing the sari which is referred to as osiriya. So like in other regions of the Indian subcontinent the Sri Lankans too had their distinctive style of wearing the sari and this unique style is referred to as osiriya or as Kandyan sari. So in this episode I'll be talking about the history its evolution and how it has become popular across the world. So to know more on such stories please make sure that you subscribe to this channel TMZ the historian. If you got queries please send them to tuankarim@gmail.com and do not forget to hit the bell icon for updates. So without further ado let's get to the history of the Sri Lankan sari also referred to as osiriya. So like in other regions of India so when you go to different parts of India depending on the place you go to they have different styles of draping the sari you have the marathi the navari sari you have the madhi sari in southern india worn by the tamil brahmins the 9 yards long sari likewise when you go to odia bengal gujarat rajasthan maharashtra kerala different regions of india have different styles of wearing the sari and it also varies from place to place and also depending on the communities Likewise even in Sri Lanka in Bangladesh in Nepal and many other countries of the South Asian region even they do have their unique styles of draping the sari Now in Sri Lanka in the northern provinces in the eastern provinces they wear the sari differently and the sari is referred to as sele sele means sari in Tamil Likewise in the low country they wear the sari most of the Sinhalese of the present day wear the nibi style sari the indian style of draping the sari the pan indian sari style which was popularized through the paintings of raja ravi varma likewise those who live in the interiors of ceylon those who hail from the kandyan provinces or those whose ancestors hailed from the kandyan region of the country which is the central region of sri lanka So those who come from Kandyan provinces back then as well as those who belong to other parts of the country as well of the present day they wear the Kandyan sari also referred to as osiriya so osiriya is a sinhala name for the Kandyan style of draping the sari which is a unique variant of the Indian style of draping the sari so instead of going nibi style in sri lanka especially those who are attached to the public sector the government sector most of the ladies clad themselves in the osiriya or else the Kandyan style of wearing the sari now the history of osiriya can be traced back to the period of the nayaka rule in sri lanka the last sinhala king of our country veera parakrama narendra singha died without a legal heir he didn't have a legitimate son to ascend the throne so his brother in law ascended the throne of kandy the central region of the country in 1739 as sri vijayaraj singha establishing the nayaka dynasty in ceylon which is now sri lanka So the Kandyan provinces the central part of the island was ruled by Sri Vijayaraja Singha the first Nayaka king and his family his ancestors hailed from South India and they married South Indians so there was a strong South Indian influence during the Nayaka period because the Nayakars themselves were South Indians they spoke Telugu and Tamil they were Vaduga rajas whose ancestors were the Madurai Nayaks as well as they were closely related to Tanjore Nayaks they came from South India and with their advent they also introduced their cultural mores traditions styles of clothing food and many other customs to the Kandyan provinces So that was when the Kandyan sari developed or osiriya developed as a result of these nayakas who settled in the Kandyan provinces starting from 1739 up until the British annexation of the Kandyan provinces in 1815 so that's when the last king of Kandy Sri Vikrama Raja Singha was ousted by the British and the Kandyan provinces came under the British control after the British siege of Kandy after the conquest in 1815 so during the period of nayaka rule which lasted from 1739 up until 1815 during that period the wearing of osiriya became immensely popular so osiriya is an amalgamation of two different styles of sari wearing one is ohoriya ohoriya is actually the drape cloth 
and then you have the sele sele is actually the tamil word for wearing the sari sari is referred to as sele so the northern regions of the country as well as in the eastern provinces even if you go to jaffna you'll realize the women who wear the sari they wear the sari then they tie it around the waist and they tuck it at the back with a fan like structure so they create something like a fan and a frilled thing and then they tuck it at the back so this was how the jaffna women used to wear likewise this tradition also traces its origin to south india so the tamil women wore the sele which is actually the tamil word for sari and prior to the arrival of the europeans and even during the portuguese and the dutch colonial periods until the whole popularity of victorian concepts of morality and propriety became common in our part of the world during the periods of the portuguese and the dutch rule and even after the arrival of the british even during the victorian period what happened was in sri lanka as well as in different regions of india women wore the sari that is the long fabric that was worn by the indian women which is still worn by the indians and sri lankans but the sari was worn without a blouse so blouse is a western influence women went nude above the waist they went bare breasted it was considered normal at the time not obscene not vulgar erotic salacious nothing of that sort it was considered normal so in india as well as in sri lanka women wore the sari but never wore a blouse under it so if you're interested in knowing the history of wearing sari blouse and its evolution please check out the previous episode which revolves around this topic so talking about the sele the sele also became popular in the kandyan province so the sele as well as ohoria were combined together to form the unique style of wearing the osaria so osaria according to certain colonial authors starting from 1850 if you read the writings of professor senarat padnavithan who was an archaeologist likewise gomez vimalaratna and british colonial authors like edward brandes denham and benjamin clough so when you read their work you realize osaria is believed to have come from the word ohoria which is draped cloth or cloth or the porter that is thrown over the shoulders now this osaria that you wear is usually around 15 feet long so 5 to 6 yards it's between 5 and 6 yards it depends again on the family the region you belong to and all those it's usually around 12 cubits long or 12 riyans long so riyana is actually the unit of measurement in sri lanka right it's still popular among sri lankan sinhalese so it's usually between 10 and 12 riyanas or 10 and 12 cubits so it's usually 5 or 6 yards long just like the navy style sarees it's not that long but it is said that in the past that is in the early years of 1800s and even prior to the arrival of the british they used to wear sarees that were much longer not just 5 or 6 yards but they were longer than that like the madisar sarees they used to be around 9 yards long there are different stories on the length of the saree used to wear the osaria so during the nayakar period that is starting from 1739 to 1815 that was when this whole concept of wearing the osaria became popular so osaria also changes from place to place there is a different distinctive style depending on the region For example what is so unique about Osaria are the frills at the waist when you look at all the women they wear this have they have this frills at the waist and these frills are referred to in singhala as odakkua so they have the odakkua that's what makes Osaria special compared to the other indian styles of draping the saree despite Osaria being an amalgamation of two south indian regional styles of saree the sele and the ohoria The osaria has the unique touch to it the frills around the waist some historians surmise that the whole osaria is of malabar origin which is of kerala origin but anyways when you talk about the frills at the waist even the frills used to change or used to differ from region to region certain families had longer frills and certain families used to have smaller frills at the waist and there was conspicuous display of fashion So at the time the Kandyan women used to wear the sari the fall of the sari so the fall of the sari is referred to as the ohori potta or the osari potta so potta is basically the pallu of the sari as it is known in india so the pallu is basically worn you can wear it on the right side if not you could wear it on the left side but then mostly the kandyan ladies at the time depending on the families for example the molamburi clan 
when you look at all the vintage photographs they used to wear it on the left side while the right side was very popular among other Candian aristocratic families daughters of the Candian nobles chieftains and spoilers so the osiria worn on the right side was popularized mainly by the world's first female elected premier sirima ratwatidaya's bandara nayaka who hailed from the aristocratic family of Kandy. She came from the Radhal aristocracy. She was from the Ratwatte clan and she used to have the Ohori Potter placed on the right side. She used to even play tennis wearing the Osiria. Likewise, she used to wear Osiria even at home. She popularized the wearing of Osiria. She was like the brand ambassador for promoting the wearing of Osiria. People came to know about the unique style of wearing Osiria mainly through Sirima Ratwatte Daya's Bandara Nayaka who was Sri Lanka's premier and served on three occasions. So whenever she went abroad, whether meeting dignitaries or members of British royalty, including the Queen, wherever she went, no matter which country she went to, irrespective of the weather over there, she always wore the Sri Lankan of Syria and stamped her identity as this fashion icon premier from Sri Lanka, which was formerly referred to as Ceylon. So she was a Ceylonese premier who wore the Osiria beautifully and made it immensely popular across the world. So talking about the jacket or the blouse that is worn with Osiria, it's very different to that of the rest of the blouses worn. When you wear a star, you have the different styles of blouses that you wear. But the Osiria blouses are with the puff sleeves and they were popularized mainly during the British colonial period. So when you look at all those vintage photographs of all these Scandian aristocratic women, they have these puff sleeve blouses. So they used to have the puff sleeve blouses and then take all these sari was tucked at one point, have it multiple plates and then the fall of the sari used to have all these floral motifs, religious motifs, elaborately designed with intricate workmanships. Some of those were studded with stones and all those. And they used to bedeck themselves with jewellery from head to toe, decked out with jewels. And they used to have these embellishments, especially on their osiri potter. It's on the pallu that they used to have all these adornments done because that's the part that is visible. That's the part you collect with multiple pleats and then you pin it to your jacket and then you allow the osiri putter to fall. So what they used to do at the time, some of the women used to have this suspension like of a piece. They used to let a piece fall. So the wearing of Osiria with a bit of a Roman touch, like how the Roman toga dress. So just like that back then during the British colonial period, when you look at photographs dating to the 19th century and the early 20th century, you'll realize that some women used to suspend it. And it's apparently wrong. This has also been mentioned by one of the Rathe Mahathirs and Sir Edward Brandis Denham, writing in 1912, Census of Ceylon of 1911. He mentions that one of the Rathe Mahathirs had mentioned at the time that it's wrong to wear the Osiria like the toga dress of the Europeans, like the Romans. You should not be wearing it as such. So you've got to collect them together, have multiple pleats, and then you've got to pin it to your jacket. So jacket is again a Western influence. The round neck with puff sleeves, the jacket was popularized. But now you have frills, you have all sorts of adornments attached to your jacket, you have lace jackets. When you look at photographs of the prominent low country Sinhalese, you'll realize that most of their ladies are wearing European dresses, the Bandar Nayakas, for example, or the Sena Nayakas. And those ladies used to wear those European gowns, the Western Victorian style gowns, and they used to team it with, you know, long sleeve blouses, laces, and frills, and cuffs, and all those. While the Candian women, those who hailed from the Candian provinces, the interiors of Ceylon, in the highlands, these ladies used to wear the Osiria. Osiri is now considered as the national dress of the Sri Lankans, especially the Sri Lankan Sinhalese women love to wear the Osiria. It is immensely popular in our country, especially among those who are attached to the public sector, whether it be universities or the public institutions, women who go to work as well as teachers particularly. They love wearing the Osiria as well as religious festivals during weddings. Osiria is a must, especially among those who hail from the Candian provinces, from the interiors of the island. They wear the Osiria for their weddings. So Osiria is the Sri Lankan national outfit. Unlike in the past, when Osiria was confined to a specific region of the country and only those who belong to the higher echelons of the society wore it, in present day, almost every Sri Lankan, the ladies, irrespective of their social background, irrespective of their ancestry and caste, they all wear the Osiria 
and osteria is considered the national dress of sri lanka so if you're interested in such stories and if you want to know more on the history of the indian subcontinent and sri lanka which was formerly called ceylon please make sure that you subscribe to this channel tmz the historian if you got queries please send them to twankarim@gmail.com do not forget to hit the bell icon for updates you can also follow me on facebook as well as on instagram and for those who are interested in the history of minority groups their cultural mores and traditions as well as on the history of landmarks in our country in sri lanka Please watch the television series Lost and Forgotten which airs every Friday at 9:30 p.m. on TV1 News First. So until I catch you guys with another interesting episode, it is me Zamir Karim signing off. Take care, God bless you and stay safe.